Thank you for joining us here on another edition of the Roadrunner Review, the 30-minute magazine show that features Metro State sports and highlights from the past month. I'm Miles Potter. Joining me is Davey Burke. Thanks, Miles. And our show is jam-packed with highlights this month. Our volleyball team played in the Colorado Premier Challenge. Our women's and men's soccer team are both back in the top 25, and we even got a little golf action for you. No doubt about it, Davey. Before we get to those goals, those kills, and those birdies, let's send it over to Lennox Williams, who has all your news from the past month in Metro State. Lennox? Thanks, guys. Last time on the show, we introduced you to the newest member to the Roadrunners family when we welcoming Jim Gillen to the staff. Well, it's time to make more room in the office as Aaron Illner joined the Red and Blue crew. Hiltner come over from the University of Colorado in Colorado Springs and will serve as Assistant Athletic Director for Student Services. She will advise students athletes in their undergrad coursework and NCAA academical progress requirements, among other jobs that will assist our students athletes. Welcome to the team, Aaron. From here in the Malai City to across the pond in Kotka, Finland, as Metro's own Brandon Jensen began his season with the KTP basketball team this last September. The former National Player of the Year helped his team go 2-2 two two in the preseason. In his first game, he scored 11 points, dished out 6 assists, recorded 3 steals and grabbed 2 rebounds. In one game, BJ scored 16 points and handed out 4 assists. We are so proud of you, BJ, and his playing career after Metro. We wish you all the best and check out GoMetroState.com to follow his blog that he writes for the website on his professional career in Finland. That's going to wrap it up for all your Roadrunners news. Back to you guys. Yeah, Davey, it's really good to see Brandon Jefferson tearing it up overseas. Yeah, we saw he had the tryouts with the Nuggets. Unfortunately, he didn't make it, but he's really making a name for himself out in Finland. You know, I like their fa Facebook page over there. I can't understand a word of Finnish, and I can't understand what they're posting about. Yeah, but one thing you can understand that always translates is BJ's skills. Seeing those highlights of him tearing it up, it's great. Absolutely. All right, we're going to kick things off here on the Road to Review with the 16th ranked women's soccer team, who began their journey back to the Sweet 16 against regional foes West Texas A&M. This game opened up the brand new Regency Athletic Complex. Spectacular facility for our men's and women's soccer team, and the women look to christen the new complex with a win. Abby Rolf finds a head to Chris a Price, but it sails just over the crossbar, and the Lady Buffs are on the attack. A big ball enters into the box. McCurley looks to corral it, and then she's kneed in the face by Haley Gerard. McCurley would have to leave the game, bringing in true freshman Brianna Flores. She would be tested right away. Rhea Belgrave sends in the chance. Flores drops it for a sec, but then she recontrols possession and keeps things at zeros. No Amy Polanco makes a perfect pass to Brandon Farley, who outruns the defender and sends it in for the first goal of the game and the first of the season. Moments later, Rolf is tripped in the box, which means penalty kick for the runners. And as always, Rolf is money from the spot. Metro State starts the new season with a 2-0 victory over the Lady Buffs. Up next for the Red and Blue was a showdown with Dallas Baptist at home. But this time, the visiting team struck first. Jolie Patterson is surrounded by one, two, three, four, five, six roadrunners. But she fires in the shot and it's perfectly placed beyond the reach of Flores. One nil Patriots. That lead wouldn't hold very long as Price plays fullback for the runners, knocking out a couple Patriots to find Case Hagenlock who goes top right corner for her first goal of the season. That goal took place less than 60 seconds after Dallas Baptist scored. Into the second half, and Hagenlock using the old noggin to find Brandy Farley, who's lightning on turf. She tracks down the ball, beats all Patriots to it, and just goes over the head of the keeper for the goal and the 2-1 win. Metro's first loss of the season took place on the road in Pomona, California, as Cal Poly Pomona netted three goals in the 3-1 win over the Roadrunners. Price helped her team avoid the shutout by scoring in the final 35 seconds of the game. The Red and Blue got back in the win column after goals by Polanco and Hagenlock, 
which upended Cal State Dominguez Hills in Carson, California. Flores preserved the shutout by making five saves. The win improved Metro State to 3-1 and one as they say goodbye to preseason and say hello to conference play. It was back home to the Mile High City where Metro hosted Colorado Mesa to kick off their RMAC schedule. Home team attacking, Price centers to Hagenlock, who strikes it, but it's Sage. She fires again, hits the rear of the defender, and then Carly Nelson with the roller, but it just missed outside the post. Farley looking to center. It bounces past a couple Mavericks, and it lands in front of Polanco, who records her second goal of the season by putting her team up 1-0. Great chance for the Mavs. Kendra Printoff makes a great move to find some space, shoots, and it glides just over the crossbar. Hagelock on the move. She dances around the defenders, heads for the corner, centers the ball in front of the net where Price is there to deflect the ball into the back of the net. That's Price's second goal of the season, and it's the Roadrunners who take the 2-0 victory, opening up Armac play. After a tough tie in Alamosa against Adam State, Coach Peach's squad was back in downtown Denver to square up against New Mexico Highlands. But it was Jordan Post who got Metro on the board first. Alexi Mar on the free kick. The ball bounces in the box and Post strikes the ball with some power. And the keep has no chance. This time would end in a 1-0 Metro win. Yeah, Miles, it's great to see our women's soccer team back in action. And it's also great to see them get some wins on the new athletic field. Yeah, that athletic field is gorgeous. And a little bit of a hiccup there on Cal Poly. But Coach Peach is going to have that team turn right back around. And they are going to go far this year. That's why she's one of the best in the country. Absolutely. Still to come here on the show, our volleyball team brought out the big guns for the prestigious Colorado Premier Challenge. And our home team did not disappoint. But coming up next, our men's soccer team has set the nation on fire. From being unranked to now number eight. Coach Parson and his squad are showing the country which team to look out for in the RMAC. We'll be right back on the Road Runner Review. Getting down to crunch time here on the Road Runner Review, and we still have plenty to get through. Basketball, baseball, softball, everything's coming up. Softball in the RMAC Championship. Uh, Aubrey Mall uh, had a great performance. We gotta get someone else in here. He's gonna have ice in his veins to get through this highlight. BJ, you're in. Yeah, I mean, softball has had an amazing year so far. I mean, they have Aubrey Malls, the starting pitcher. I mean, they have Clutch. Clutch. I mean, they got a lot of great hitters. I mean, so I think they're going to make a great run this year. The season never ends here at the MSBN, and sometimes we drag. So sometimes we need a kick in the butt. Rafi! Are you kidding me, Rafi? You call that a highlight tape? That's pathetic. Who taught you how to rap a chord, Babish? That's a joke. You call this a tape job? Rowdy! Are you serious? Do you call that dancing? That's terrible. The Road Runner Review is brought to you by its proud sponsors, Panorama Orthopedics and Spine Center. From sports injuries to spine injuries to total joints for arthritis, they are in your neighborhood caring for your injuries. Located at three convenient locations, Golden, Littleton, and Fullerton. Thanks for coming back. While our women's team is trying to find their footing, our men's soccer team brought back a young but talented group that featured eight starting sophomores and zero seniors. They opened up the 2014 season at the brand new Regency Athletic Complex. A beautiful day to kick off the brand new men's soccer campaign as they look to take on the Sharks from Hawaii Pacific. Danny Rua dances through traffic, centers it to Dustin Burke who goes top shelf but it bounces out, no goal. Hawaii Pacific on the free kick. They go near post. James Tanner makes the fantastic save to keep the Sharks off the board. We head into the second half. Loose ball in the box. Daniel Herring takes the touch, rips it, and flies it past Tanner, allowing the Sharks to take his 1-0 lead. Metro looking to answer right back. Arubla in the box, sends the shot. Wait, no! It's a brilliant pass that catches the keeper off guard, allowing Mayfield to slide into the box and net the ball. We are all tied up at one. The Roadrunners like that goal so much, thus than three minutes later, they score again. This time, Arubalet takes it himself and puts in the game winner to start the season off on a winning note. The Roadrunners continue their winning ways in Austin, Texas, where they first used an overtime penalty kick by Dustin Burke to defeat St. Edwards 2-1. It was Burke's first goal of the season. Newcomer Josh Belford scored his first goal of the 2014 season in the first 13 minutes off an assist by Jeff Gillis. Metro's next game wouldn't need overtime as four different Roadrunners scored in the 4-1 route of Dallas Baptist. 
Jack Mayfield earned the game-winning goal off an assist by Belfridge. The nation took notice of the team's great start and rewarded the Roadrunners with a top 25 ranking, placing them at number 14. But the team would be tested, facing off against their bitter rival 6th range Regis University. That's right, Miles. And let's not forget that the Rangers have the Armac preseason player there, Martin Mabin, who torched Metro last year with two goals and assists versus Metro in their previous matchup. This match took place back in the Mile High City on Metro's home pitch. The Rudderers on the move early. It's Berg, makes the defender look silly, but the keeper is there to keep the game scoreless. We mosey on over to the second frame, and it's Regis who puts on the pressure. Nick Frank, point blank, but James Tanner is there to make the big save. Tanner wouldn't stop there. On Thor Christensen's and blasts the shots way, way out, and it's Tanner who goes up tall and deflects the ball over the crossbar. Tanner made six saves in this match. Did anyone score in this much hype matchup? Mayfield takes the ball into the box. He waits, centers to Arubla, and stops the tape. The junior forward is surrounded by Regis defenders, but it's Arubla versus the keep. So what happens next? Does Danny go top shelf? Does he go low? Or does he get stopped cold by the key to send this game into overtime? Come on now, this is the road to review. Roll the tape. Aruba goes low, and the home team pulls up the huge upset against six range Rangers, who improved their record to 5-0 overall and 2-0 in the RMAC. Metro State then hosted Colorado Christian at the Regency Athletic Complex. And would there be a hangover after their big win over Regis? After looking at my magical eight ball, all signs pointed no. How many shots does it take to score the first goal of the game? One, two, and finally the third shot finds the back of the net as Berg puts his team up by one early. Second half, Mayfield finds Belfridge who makes a perfect touch to get the ball right in front of him and he finishes strong to put Metro up by two. How about more Belfridge? Aruba fires in the shot but no dice. Belfridge however is there to clean up the rebound and it's getting out of hand now. Three zip Roadrunners. Now look at this play, Michael Jordahl finds Ruba who blows right past the defender, strikes and what a great save by the CCU keep. The ball finds the feet of Rose Shrestha who puts it in the box to Ruba, who won't miss twice. Metro wallops the Cougars 4-0 to stay perfect in the RMAC. Yeah, Davey, to end the month of September, they did go on the road, and they did lose in Pueblo, 1-0. Yeah, the team now drops number 12, but we know Pueblo is a tough place to play. I'm sure they'll bounce back from it. Absolutely. Still ahead on the show, Coach Hendricks and her Roadrunners took on the number 3, the number 5, and the number 10 team in the nation in the Colorado Premier Challenge. Come on back. I think I smell an upset in the air. Are you a college student that needs a place to live? Are you still living with your parents and want your own space? The Regency Student Housing is perfect for you. The community offers many amenities such as a fitness center, two basketball courts, big screen amphitheater, all you can eat dining hall, bowling alley, arcade, free parking, and a shuttle to and from the Auraria campus. For more information, please call 303-477-1950 or visit our website at regencystudenthousing.com. Some students come to Metropolitan State University of Denver to find their future. Others look to sharpen their current skills. In the case of David Thibodeau, it was both. Our faculty helped fuel his entrepreneurial spirit while encouraging him to pursue his personal passions. These two talents came together in Ska Brewing Company, which he co-founded in 1998 in Durango and is considered one of the top up-and-coming Colorado companies. The Roadrunner Review would like to thank its sponsors, Jason's Deli. Real food is fresh, higher quality, more flavorful, less processed, and naturally better tasting. Get real food at any Jason's Deli location. And the Boulder Broker Inn, a proud partner and preferred hotel for Metro State Athletics. Welcome back. Last time on the show, we showed you that our volleyball team was picked to finish fourth in the conference after bringing back 10 returners from the team that won the RMAC tournament title. Yeah, Miles, it's a very talented team indeed, and they ventured west to San Diego for the Seaside Invitational to show the West Coast what Metro State Volleyball is all about. They went 4-0 in that tournament, then it was back here to the Uraria Event Center to battle the best of the best of the best in the Colorado Premier Challenge. Metro State co-hosted the 2014 Colorado Premier Challenge along with Regis University. The tournament featured top teams from around Division II. It was a big early season test for the Roadrunners who entered the tournament with a 4-0 record. 
In game one of day one of the tournament, the runners took on the number 10 ranked Southwest Minnesota Mustangs. Metro lost in three highly competitive sets. Despite the loss, Metro right side hitter Lauren Keanu had a solid outing as she led all players in kills with 16. However, Metro committed 21 errors in the loss. Metro State was back at it later in the day as the squad took on Florida Southern. The Roadrunners took the first two sets for a 2-0 match lead and had 38 kills in the first two sets. However, Metro let the Moxins back into it as the Mox took the next two sets, forcing a fifth set, which Metro would win as they held FSU to a hitting percentage of .182. We're pretty happy. Like, that was a big win for us. Like, the first game, we were there. We all felt it. And they were number 10. And it just helps to show, like, we're in this with Division Two. It helps kind of see, like, where we're at. The Road Runners came into day two looking for two big wins. However, in the first match versus number three ranked Minnesota Duluth, Metro was swept by the Bulldogs in three sets despite playing UMD tough in the first two sets. However, one Road Runner who did not struggle was once again Keanu, who led all Road Runners in kills in the match with 13 and a hitting percentage of 650. Metro looked to bounce back later in the day in their final game of the Colorado Premier versus the number five ranked Central Missouri Jennies who were looking for their first win in the tournament. Despite being ranked number five, the Roadrunners ran all over the Jenny, sweeping them in three quick sets. Metro held CMU to a negative .008 hitting percentage. Metro outside hitter Kylie Hahn led all players in kills in the match with 13. Metro State would finish the 2014 Premier with a record of 2-2, two and two, but after two weekends of tournaments for the team, head coach Debbie Hendricks is pleased with what she has seen so far. Uh, back at the beginning of the season, we'd be 6-2 and two at this point with the caliber of teams that we've been playing. I would be very pleased with that. So uh, my assessment is um, that we're a very solid team. We still have a lot of areas that we can uh, make some, some nice improvement. I think our ceiling is pretty high, so that, that bodes well for us. I'm excited about this year. For the Roadrunner Review, I'm Davey Burke. The Mavericks came to downtown Denver looking to keep their perfect 3-0 record intact. But it was the home team that struck first. First set and senior superstar Lauren Quijano crushed the kill off the Mavericks defender. The California native blasts 19 kills in the match. Metro takes the first set 25-19. Kylie Hoagland powers down the kills in the second set, helps her team take the two sets to zero lead. The Mavericks would answer right back and take the next two sets. Into the final set. Casey Ball sends it in one of her 12 kills on the night and puts her team up 11 to nine. Michaela Smith on the serve. She sends it in and it falls to the ace. Mesa trying to stay alive, but it's served into the net and Metro State pulls off the upset against the number 20 ranked Mavericks. Coach Hendricks and her team would finish out the weekend with a win over Fort Lewis and Western New Mexico to improve and start the season 6-0 in the Armac, their best start since 2002. The celebration is on for Mike Dunlap. The Skyhawks celebrate a second national title in program history and the winner of the 2006 Harlan Hill Trophy as Division II College Football Player of the Year is Danny Woodhead from Shadron State. ASU, ASU, ASU. you want family-friendly sporting events. Sporting events where you can be comfortable. And entertained in a positive environment. Watching great individuals and teams compete. With commitment, effort, and good sportsmanship. That's what the Division II Game Environment Initiative is about. Be a part of the excitement and find out why. These student athletes say with pride, I chose. I chose. I chose Division II. So glad you could join us back here on the Road Runner Review. The 2013 season was the very first season for our women's golf team, and Ben Porty built the program from scratch. We bring back Lennox Williams to tell us more. Lennox? Thanks, guys. Coach Porty did a tremendous job leading his women golf team to a sixth place finish at the RMAC Championship last spring. After a second place finish at the Wolfpack Invitation in early September, it was on to the Colorado Christian Invite in Littleton, Colorado. It was a gorgeous two day for 18 holes of golf. Freshman Kim Moore was stellar for the red and blue, hitting a personal best of 79 on day two of the invite. She would tie for 14th, hitting a 159 for both days. Sophomore Ali Johnston finished eighth overall, 
after hitting a pair of 78 in both days. Senior Natalie Gallagher marvel on day two, shooting a team best 74, helping her finish seventh overall. Junior Valerie Cruz finished in a tie for sixth place after firing a 154, which include a career best 76 on the second day. And finally, sophomore Cha Cha Wilhoit finished second overall at the invite by shooting a 75 on day one and a 76 on day two. Their marks propelled the team to a first place finish. The program's first ever tournament win in their relative short time as a Metro State sport. Coach Porty was excited with the team's great success so early in the season. A little bit surprising, really, but um, knowing the talent that we have on this team, I knew it would come. Um, I just didn't think quite this early, but we have even a sixth and seventh player at home that are, are very good too. And so we're deep all the way through seven and uh, having one through five play um, play pretty good golf and shooting shooting all in the sevens today. To be able to drop a 79 is very big for us, to have every girl in it and not just relying on four scores, but knowing you have five that are able to uh, put up put up a good score for that team score. Oh, it's so exciting, yeah. Um, when I came to, from D1 to D2, you know, I was expecting just, you know, we're, we might not win any tournaments, and it's going to be completely different. It's completely different golf. We don't play 36 holes in one round. We play 18 holes, you know, two days. And um, so having my team, um, you know, shooting what D, it, I just told them when we were sitting, I was like, you guys do better than most D1s. We did so much better than most D1s today and we're D2. So that just shows like, it doesn't matter what division of golf you're in, it matters what type of golf you're playing. In the upcoming month, Coach Porter and his group will take part in the Colorado Mesa Meet, the Lady Buff Invitational, and the Dixie Star Fall Tournament to round out the fall season. Check out GoMetroState.com to stay up to date with your women's golf team. We go into top place coming up next on the Road Runners Review. Coming down the home stretch of the Road Runner Review. And we have to catch you up on both our cross country teams and our tennis teams. Our very own Respect to the Captain Eric Lansing has all the top finishes and the top match points from our fall sports. Eric? Thanks, guys. How about that Lauren Kiana for the volleyball team? She is jumping out the arena on some of those kills. Let's start with our tennis team as they hosted the Roadrunner Invitational in downtown Denver. Division 1, 2, and 3 schools took part in the tournament. So some big time competition for the red and blue. In men's doubles, Sam Stember and Callum Hayes battled through four doubles opponents to win the Flight B Championship. Shown is Courtney Wright who partnered up with Megan Bell, not shown, who also won their Flight B Championship. In men's singles, Josh Grace defeated two Flight 8 opponents to reach the final four, but fell 7-5, 7-5 to Ronzai Saurumbe from Seward County Community College. Saurumbe reached the finals where he met up with roadrunner Nick Baker. Baker took down Division I opponent Austin Mayo 6-1-6-4 from Northern Colorado to reach the finals. Into that championship match and Baker takes an early lead, grabbing the first set 7-6. Saurumbe rallies in the second set to win 7-6 to even things up, but it would be Saurumbe who carried his momentum taking the final set and the championship 6-0. A great performance by our Roadrunners. Now for some cross country and our Roadrunners killed it at the Oklahoma State Cowboy Jamboree last September. The women's team blew away the competition in the small university division, finishing first, scoring 34 points. The team was led by Brianna Hemming, who finished second overall in a time of 19 minutes even. Four Roadrunners finished in the top nine and six in the top 12. Great showing by our women. 
Now for the men who finished second overall at the meet in the small university division. The team finished behind West Texas A&M, scoring 81 points after three Roadrunners finished in the top 15. Sophomore Jason Carey crossed the line first for Metro State, finishing eighth in a time of 26 minutes and 15 seconds. The cross country team will host the next meet on October 4th for the Metro State Invitational at Wash Park. Check out GoMetroState.com for more details and highlights from that event. Back to you guys at the Auraria Event Center. Thanks, Eric. Now it's time for your favorite part of the show, the top play segment, which brings you the best of the best plays from the month of September. And as always, they're brought to you by the Regency. Play number five comes from the men's soccer team and their big win over number six ranked Regis. Metro's keeper, James Tanner, stonewalls the Rangers offense, making two incredible saves to lead his squad to the shutout. This one made play number five on the RMAX top plays of the week as Tanner goes up and knocks away the potential equalizer. That one looked like it's heading right under the crossbar. With a keeper like that, the NCAA tournament bid is definitely in the cards. We'll have more from this game later. How about some women's soccer in play number four? Carissa Pice bulldozing her way through two Dallas Baptist defenders to find Tess Hagenluck all alone, and she goes over the keep for her first of the season and her first goal in almost two years. After tearing her ACL in 2013, she's back on the field for the Red and Blue, and boy, does she look good. Watch out, Armac. Hagenlock is back for Metro State. Now it's time to go back to that men's upset over Regis. It's Jack Mayfield, who beats one defender to get into the box. Then he centers past two Rangers, who find Danny Rubla with only the keeper to beat. It's the junior striker who's money from the spot, and he records his third goal early in the season. The junior has rebounded well from the sophomore slump and he looks to be in the early voting for RMAC Player of the Year. Nick Baker had a whale of a tournament at the Roadrunner Invitational in early September. The senior defeated three opponents in two days to reach the singles championship match. He didn't lose a set in those matches and looked to take the championship against Seward County Community College, Ronzai Sorombe. Baker took the first set 7-6, but dropped the second set 7-6 and Sarombe carried his momentum to the 6-0 set 3 win. But kudos to Baker who reached a championship match in the top flight seeding. And the top play from the month of September is brought to you by the men's soccer team and their crazy 2-1 win over UC Colorado Springs on the road. After giving up a goal in the final eight seconds to allow the Mountain Lions to tie it, it was into overtime where Danny Rubles sends it from the corner. And it finds the head of Josh Belfridge who deflects it perfectly into the back of the net for the golden goal. It was Belfridge's third goal of the season and it helps the team escape Colorado Springs with a 2-1 victory. And those are the top plays of the month of September. As always, they're brought to you by the Regency. Yeah guys, how about that play number four? Tess Hagen lost goal, that was a beauty. Yeah, going top shelf, perfectly placed. It doesn't get any better than that. Absolutely. Remember, you can check out all the highlights at GoMetroState.com all season long to follow your Roadrunners. And make sure you tune in next month for more high-flying Metro State action. But for Lennox Williams, Miles Potter, Kermit Ball, Eric Lansing, and the entire Roadrunner Review crew, I'm Davey Burke, and we'll see you next month.